and we can select the cluster that we're going to be working with. And after right clicking, we can see that we have some options under automated deployments, such as attach ACR to cluster, create a deployment, and create a GitHub workflow. Hi, and welcome to another exciting episode of Open at Microsoft. I am Tatsip, an engineer in AKS team, and today I'm being joined by Rainier, who will talk about automated deployment using AKS VS Code Extension. Hi, Rainier. Welcome. Hey, Tats. Thanks for having me. So what are we talking today about the automated deployment and how the draft tool under the hood has been used for this specific feature? Hey, Tats. So today we're going to be discussing some new features that are really going to enhance the way that users can get their code up and running as an application without having to leave the VS Code Editor. Nice. Exciting. So what is this feature about and how exactly this gets hooked into the AKS VS Code extension? Yeah. So this feature is called automated deployments. And we can actually go through and kind of see how I can go from just having my code or my repository and bring that all the way to a launched application inside of AKS. Oh, wow. So without leaving the VS Code, pretty much from your project to the deployment phase and all the other nitty-gritty files and deployment files ready for you. Really? Exactly. Do we have a demo for us? Yes. So luckily, we have this uh, Contoso Air application. It's a JavaScript application for a travel booking. So here I have the code in my VS Code, and we can actually take it through all the steps to get that application up and running. So we can actually go to the AKS extension and we can select the cluster that we're going to be working with. And after right clicking, we can see that we have some options under automated deployments, such as attach ACR to cluster, create a deployment and create a GitHub workflow. So for this first part, I'm going to be discussing this attach ACR to cluster. And for the sake of time, I've already gone ahead and pre-filled. So essentially, why this feature would be important uh, for someone like myself to get my application up and running, I'm going to be hosting it inside of the Azure Container uh, Registry, and that is where my AKS cluster is going to be pulling this image. So essentially, I'm prov uh, this is going to be providing the functionality to my cluster to be able to pull that image. And here, we simply just provide some details about the ACR as well as the cluster and we can easily go ahead and attach that and provide that privilege. And under the hood, this is being done by utilizing the Azure Identity SDK. That's amazing. So instead of using uh, the CLI system, we are using the SDKs to make the call and round trip to hook it up. That's amazing. And these yes. are the common challenges which developers actually go through in their normal development cycle. So I can see how this could be very advantageous. So post this, what exactly happens? Right, so now we've provided that ACR pull privilege. Now we actually have to go ahead and create the deployment files that we're gonna be using. So the second option provided here under automated deployments is gonna be this create a deployment. We can actually see the screen here. So. With this screen, we just have to provide some details, uh, the subscription we're gonna be using, ACR, uh, some image details, and where we would want these uh, deployment files. Here, we have these options of manifest, uh, helm, and customize, as well as some application names. So uh, by just providing these details, we can go ahead and we can create uh, these deployment files that we're gonna be using uh, to get our application up and running. And for example, I can go ahead and create this deployment. And here we can see that the uh, deployment files were created and we're also provided with some next steps. And how this is being done under the hood, this is actually uh, leveraging the draft binary to accomplish this. So essentially we're crafting a command uh, to provide to draft and draft is responding with us with these necessary uh, deployment files. 
That's awesome. So it's pretty much doing all the heavy lifting for the user without leaving their editor experience and letting it generate via this extension. I see it has doing a whole lot of things behind the scenes. Brilliant. So at this point, I think we are going to have a bunch of manifest files by now. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So Works. now we, we currently have these manifest files and the user can go ahead and uh, use these uh, right out of the box uh, how, the, how they would like, uh, but they can also go ahead and take this another step further. They can actually go ahead and use these deployment files to create an automation in the form of a GitHub workflow in which every time that there is a change to their code inside their repository, it will automatically go ahead, build an image, and deploy that image to an AKS cluster. That's brilliant. So taking a very whole pain of even going outside and finding, finding about the deployment, the deployments are already re ready, ready to be pushed into the code, and either user can change it according to their need or when they it will work out of box. Exactly. Mark. So I can see where you're going now. You're going to push it to your Git repo, and I'm, I'm very excited about what happens next. Perfect. We can actually go ahead and take a look at how that would look. So as a the third option here under automated deployments, we have this create a GitHub workflow. And we can actually see that screen pre-filled here. So here, uh, this is that create a, dra a draft to GitHub workflow page. And this page is going to allow us to create that file that will create that GitHub workflow. But first, before uh, to get this page up and running, we're going to need a Docker file. But luckily, we also have the functionality inside the extension to create a Docker file for my project. So here, I'm just uh, putting the location of where I want the Docker file the uh, language, the version, as well as the application port that I can go ahead and create. Nice. So I've gone ahead and created that and you see that we're prompted with some next steps. So now we can uh, continue on our journey with creating that GitHub workflow. Here, we're just providing some uh, details as well as the workflow name, the GitHub repository in which we uh, would like the workflow and as well as some necessary details such as our Docker file, where we're going to be building a little bit about our container registry and our cluster. And uh, we uh, just provide these deployment files. So here I can simply go ahead and create that workflow file. And we can actually take a look at what this workflow file looks like. So. This workflow file is going to consist of two parts. It's going to consist of a build section as well as a deploy section. And this will get triggered anytime there's a change to that repository. So from here, I can just simply uh, go ahead and push all the current changes that I have in my code up into my GitHub repository. Wow. This is simple. I mean, I really like the way it is guiding throughout. So that's amazing. Can we see any app which is getting developed on the projects you showed for near in the going about the um yeah. here? Yeah, for sure. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this uh, workflow looks like inside of GitHub and also the application. It's awesome. So here we actually have that workflow that gets triggered as soon as that uh, file, that workflow file gets pushed into our repository. As we can see, we have in a build image section, which is going to uh, build that necessary image as well as push it to the Azure container registry that I'm utilizing. And then finally, that image is going to go ahead and get deployed uh, into the AKS cluster. So here we can actually see that application deployed as a fully uh, functioning uh, travel site. That's brilliant. That's amazing. So right from nothing in the project to fully deployed application using the workflow without leaving your Arias ecosystem using EKS extension, seems like a dream come true for 
a lot of DevOps engineers who sometimes needs to work out the uh, deployment files and workflow files. So I'm sure this is going to help out a lot of DevOps engineers. Um, so what are the future enhancements you are going to put through and where people can ask for new features? If you want to share that information. Yeah, of course. So in the future, we're going to be uh, coming out with some really nice features to finish that end-to-end flow um, of that code all the way to the launching of the application. Currently, users still have to uh, do some things on the authentication side. So in the future, we want to uh, completely finish that flow and really streamline the process. And if users would like to um, would like to have some more information, they can go ahead and visit the uh, provided uh, the provided page to find some more information. That's amazing. I'm really looking forward to some of the future future development around this feature. And thank you so much for showing us this quick feature, which really makes sense. Like, or, and DevOps engineers like simpler. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks, Sats. Thanks for having me.